What is good guys? It's your boy, this dude, and today we are building an African fire escape enclosure. In fact, we're going to be building this one, and we're going bioactive. Let's go! Now before we go too far, uh, this is where I'm at in the build. Uh, I only thought about filming this after I'd already started. So, But this is where I'm at. I got my mesh down and I've got my clay pebbles down. Um, I could add more because I have more. Help the enclosure have better drainage so we could um, water the plants that we put in here the way that we want, uh, need to rather. Now the substrate we're going to be using today is a custom substrate made out of sphagnum moss, a little bit of perlite, uh, organic topsoil, and um, the, what is it called, the repta soil. I mixed that in there too to give me a little bit more volume. But um, this one, I, I have a bin filled with like just the, the mixture unsanitized, just together. And then this, I have an entire bin of our substrate already sanitized. I baked it at like 275 degrees or something like that um, to get that ready for us. And if we don't have enough in this bottom bin, then once again, like I said, we have this full. We can go ahead and start baking off more and getting it ready. But um, yeah, so and I only do that to make sure that there's nothing inside of the topsoil. I use organic topsoil. I get really big bags from like Home Depot. And um, although there are like no chemicals in it, it is stored outside and sometimes may have like other things in it, animals and stuff, or little insects, things like that. So I just want to make sure that that uh, nothing can survive that. For the lighting for the plants, uh, well, lighting in general, we're going to be using a UV bar. We have the UV bar actually in place up here. Uh, we're going to be using this UV bar. Um, we're not going to be using a basking spot. This, uh, this is the warm reptile room and this room gets about 84 degrees during the day. So we are using under tank heat with a probe over on the left side. So we'll use a combination of under tank heat and the UV. And then for the plants, the light we're using for the plants is um, this one here. It doesn't have, you don't have to really even go this route. I'm only including plants in this enclosure because it's a little upgrade for, this is a breeding pair of uh, fire skinks that I have. Uh, it's a little upgrade for them and I don't know, we wanted to, this is going to be permanent for them as long as they're together. And we just wanted them to kind of have something cool. So plants aren't really suggested for fire skinks seeing as how they like to burrow. That's literally all they do. They climb too, but Primarily, they spend their time burrowed in the soil, so um, we wouldn't normally like recommend plants, but we're just we're gonna try it out. We'll see how it goes. So I got a light for that. You could use something as strong as that or not as strong as that, I guess. You know what I mean? We have we have multiple lights. This is like right in the middle for us. So yeah, we'll keep going with this.
at this point, you can take a little bit of time to kind of think about what you want to do with your plants. Maybe do a little bit of research, look at some pictures, look at some other people's enclosures, look at the items that you have, get your plants cleaned up, kind of move things around inside, get it all set up. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go clean our plants up now. I'll show you what plants we're using for this particular build. Right now, just brainstorm. We got our, our uh, substrate in place. We may need a little bit more, so but I have it on hand. Um, and yeah, just think about where you want this build to go as far as your, if you're adding plants, if you're not adding plants, you, you could use fake plants, you could um, use like fake structures, you know, like the tree trunks and stuff like that. There's all types of things you can do with the, um, your bioactive build, but we're going with live plants this time. We're going to see how it goes. And um, yeah, so we're going to go clean these plants up and continue this build. Let's go. And here we have some of the plants I will be using today. This one here is called uh, Denium Desert Rose. I've never seen this plant before, but um, we're gonna use it and just see how it does. Um, I've had it sitting for about a week now. Oh, <laughs> just trying to keep everything alive. Here we have Aztec grass we will be adding um, just for a little bit of cover. Hopefully this takes off. Y'all know this, um, this will not only grow tall, but it'll bush out. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this one is called, but I've seen this plant like, I just, I've seen this plant a lot bigger than this particular clipping and they grow tall and they bush out. Very big leaves, a lot of cover, very strong stems. It's a beautiful plant actually, so hopefully I can get this to take off. And then we'll be using our favorite, Pothos. This is Marble Queen Pothos. Um, I like it because it's uh, variegated. I love the white leaves. They're beautiful. And you guys know Pothos is super strong. So we're going to get these all cleaned up, get them ready to go in, and uh, yeah, let's get to building and see how this turns out. Alright you guys, 
this is where I am so far. Let me take back up real quick. See the enclosure. Get this light out of here, Jay. See the enclosure. All right. All right. So this is a banana plant. Bana banana plant. Um, we have um everything planted. All right. We got our big plant back here. Our pathos variants here. Our Aztec grass here. This here, right? Um, I just placed a couple of river pebbles on top. Not to. It, it's just to hold the plants upright because I you know our animals are gonna burrow around and everything so anytime we see anything going on we just come over here and readjust whatever but um I don't know how that's gonna go for the overall plant life but we're we're, we're putting live plants in here to just like I said just to help these animals feel more at home feel more comfortable uh, they'll be on their I think third clutch of eggs soon so we just want to help facilitate more natural behavior in captivity so we're giving them plants. Like I said, I'm gonna grab a couple things from their enclosure, put them in here, see what space we're working with, see how it looks. Um, these plants may stay in this orientation, they may move, but yeah, we're gonna just continue this project. Let's go. All right, you guys, this entire video just took a turn, just went left. Not for the worst though. We got some good news. Thought we were just doing a enclosure build. Just a couple minutes ago, I'd say that this particular pairing was working on their third clutch, right? Um, scratch that. We're on our fourth clutch because the third clutch is in the enclosure and we're going to collect these eggs right now. I don't know how many we got. There's a couple, uh, a couple of them here now, and like I said, I'm gonna just get in here and do some collecting, and I'll check back in with you guys in a second. All right, so we got four eggs from this clutch, and this one, you see this one over here is a little desiccated. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the incubator now, and yeah, let's move along. After collecting the eggs, like I said, we got three that have life in them, I marked them. And we got them in our uh, perlite. And then this one that was desiccated over here, the one that had the dents in it, it doesn't even have life in it, but I still put it in the, um, the incubation box. I, as you see, I gave them a lot of space because this one's probably gonna go bad. We can go ahead and get these in the incubator and go check out our animals and keep this going. Guys, and this is the male and female pair of fire skinks. This is this uh, particular breeding pair that we're building for. I had to get a light on them so you guys could see them. This is the male here. This is the female here. I don't know if you guys can see, but the male's head takes on more of like an arrow shape, more triangular. And the female's head is more streamlined. Straight down her body. Both of these animals I've had since before they were even born. They were eggs, and I hatched them separately. We raised them all up for years. This is a, this process has taken a couple years. Um, and they started breeding at two years almost exactly. And then now, then they were captive bred. Their parents were captive bred. And now they're giving up, they're on their third clutch. They just gave us their third clutch and working on their fourth clutch. Now, captive bred, all multiple generations of captive bred African fire skinks. Um, it's beautiful, uh, very healthy animals. And uh, yeah, so I think this is gonna be great to raise up some more babies and raise them for the next couple years, pair them with some other bloodlines and, and continue this journey. Um, yeah, we're looking for more. So we got, we're looking for a lot of things, but yeah, so just so you guys, I only did this for the breeders so you guys can see. The man, these are, they were born a couple days apart. The males are a little bit bigger. And they, like I said, two years, they'll be ready to breed. But the males are a little bit bigger and their heads are shaped like, more like triangular. And then your females are more streamlined. More like a straight line down their body. So yeah, they're gearing up for, for clutch number four. We're gonna look at their enclosure and uh, wrap this up. All right, we're all 
almost done. We got one more step. You know, no bioactive enclosure is complete without your isopods and your springtails. So we're gonna add them and wrap this up. Let's go. We did it, and even better than building a new dope bioactive enclosure for our African fire skinks, we found eggs again today. Amazing. Working on our third or fourth, fourth generation captive bred fire skinks, this is amazing. I just hope they feel the same way I do right now. I hope that they enjoy this new enclosure. They got a bigger footprint, they got four feet to work with, a lot of live plants. Now they were doing good in the smaller enclosure, but like I said, they're, they're getting bigger and they're producing. Wanted to give them a little bit more space. And we, we got many more enclosures to build. We got new animals, new animals coming in. We got a lot of things to do. So we're gonna get back to work. We're gonna let these guys settle in. Tune in next time. We're gonna be doing a Kenyan zebra skink build anyways. I'm your boy Smith. This is All Things Living. I appreciate you guys showing up. I know you could have been anywhere else on this planet, but you decided to be here. I appreciate you. Anyways, I'm out. Peace.